back on the bigger side of things, we finally got a look at the Rotor X 1404 3600 KV. Now the KV on this motor is right on the edge. So this one we're actually looking at 4S to be more closely comparable to the uh, 4500 on 3S that we use as our baseline. Now this one's super interesting because theoretically this size stator should have ever so slightly more torque than an 1106, but obviously it's a very different aspect ratio. So this is a great opportunity to see just how well that stacks up in real world tests. And in terms of prop loading, we have a really uh, kind of nice looking layout. As usual, our uh, very light two inch, um, higher than it is on some of the even smaller motors, um, but still probably on the uh, lower side. Not so low as that it's going to likely completely fall out of uh, the efficient range of the motor, but uh, going straight through the middle of our uh, efficient range is not the exactly the best place for it. Our heavy two inch and light uh, two and a half inch prop loads uh, are looking to take best advantage of uh, what efficiency this motor can give, um, likely in a position to drop down right into peak performance through much of their uh, operating zone. The slightly heavier loads like the uh, three inch, the, uh, the three inch by blade, a little bit outside of the area of best efficiency, although still um, easily going to be in this 70% uh, zone with, uh, once you take unloading into account. And the two and a half inch quad blade also being right around in that same place uh, under uh, kind of, this is about 75% throttle in here. We're just touching up on 70% efficiency. Uh, and down at mid throttle where we've got our little kind of peak pushing down, um, we're going to be in a decent zone of efficiency uh, in most of the mid band there. 3044, still looking to be a bit heavy of a load on this motor. Um, unloading, we're going to get probably down into the 60% range. Uh, not as good as it could be, um, but certainly uh, viable. We're not, you know, pushing down deep into the red on that, unless you are constantly doing punch outs. But even then, partway down the, uh, the throttle range on that, um, where the efficiency uh, pokes in a little more, we're going to be in a slightly better place on that um, in, in mid-throttle anyway. We can also see that uh, kind of thermal drop-off that we've uh, seen in some other motors recently. Um, so unfortunately, this isn't going to be the best uh, look at the thrust because you can count on better cooling in the air. So this drop-off here, you're uh, not so likely to see unless you're really, really hammering on the motor. For the 3044, it's uh, telling us we'll see about uh, 260 grams of thrust, although if we trace that uh, torque line up, we're looking at something near 290, so 280, 290 uh, is pretty nice uh, on that uh, heavy prop, uh, as we've definitely got uh, torque to make it spin. Looking down at the uh, 3020, we're seeing about 285 grams of thrust, which is pretty nice, still in line with uh, what we're seeing on the 1106s, and in a higher band of efficiency on the motor as well. On our two and a half inch by, we're seeing 212 grams, 174 for the 2035 bullnose, and then that really light 2030, we're down to about 133 grams of thrust. Now, if we compare its efficiency against the uh, Emacs RS 1106 4500 that we normally look at, it's pretty similar. Um, if anything, actually, the uh, Emacs looks like it's giving a slightly better efficiency um, on these kind of mid-load um, props here in the middle. Um, probably some of this is due to having to run this uh, 1404 on higher voltage to get the same uh, output power there. So we're taking a slight penalty from running 4S versus 3S on that. So if we had this 1404 in a higher KV and could run it at a lower voltage, you'd probably see some of that advantage disappear. Even when we are seeing it though, it's not massively like here on the 3020, we're about halfway up this 70% uh, band. Uh, and then we're just uh, on like three quarters of the 60% band there. And this is one of the more extreme areas as well. 
if we uh, if we're looking down here at kind of mid band on the mid throttle, um, the uh, efficiency zones are actually very very close to each other. So we're probably no more than 10% out uh, at the worst. And how it performs down in uh, the low throttle half and and quarter throttle zone uh, is also very similar. And if anything, actually, uh, that is where uh, we're getting slightly better performance out of the uh, 1404 with getting this 50% uh, efficiency zone, getting us just a little lower down, right where the torque curves of these kind of mid-load props fall. If we compare the full throttle traces, the... Uh, the 1404 is the one here on the top, so this is slightly higher up in uh, equivalent uh, ultimate RPM, uh, 4S3600 kV versus 3S4500 kV. In terms of power output on the really heavy 3044, we're pushing uh, almost 180 watts compared to about 140 watts on the uh, the Emax motor. So unfortunately, we're seeing uh, this uh, additional thermal soak on, on both of these motors. It kind of hope that the uh, the large open frame um, of that 1404 uh, would help it cooling, um, but obviously it doesn't make a super big difference uh, with the limited cooling uh, that I'm able to feed it on the dyno. On the 3020, we're getting about 125 watts into it. Our heavy two inch loads, we're looking at about 92 watts. And then down on our light two inch, only about 65 watt draw. And if you look at the slope of the, uh, the torque curve there. Although there's some oddness at uh, very low uh, torque values, it's uh, probably brought on by uh, vibration. Uh, if, if I had to guess, in, in these sections, before the thermal soak starts to kick in, it does look like we're seeing ever so slightly uh, steeper slope there on the 1404 versus the 1106. So the torque delivery is very, very similar, but it does look like the 1404 does have an ever so slight edge um, on the torque front. So that's going to give you a slightly better acceleration as well, which is nice to have because these two motors weigh almost exactly the same amount. So we're not actually uh, suffering in, uh, much weight penalty for the extra torque from the 1404. Now, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't compare this against the 1304 as well. And unfortunately, it seems to suffer ever so slightly in efficiency versus that uh, 1304 too. Still not massively, but in this sort of 75% uh, throttle range, it looks like we're seeing uh, a little higher efficiency on these mid-load props compared to the 1404, where that uh, efficiency zone, zone pushes out uh, into slightly higher RPM. Down in the low band, we're also seeing uh, a little higher efficiency down on much of the uh, torque curve on the sort of half throttle range. Um, although that's still only a partial band and that might only be a couple of percent difference, just uh, the takeover from high 50s to low 60s. And if we pull together their uh, full throttle torque curves, we see again in that middle section there, we've, you know, we've got our, our likely vibration at high RPMs. Um, but in that mid band section here, they look to have very, very close to the same uh, torque delivery. As we'd expect these having very uh, closely sized uh, uh, stators very closely sized to each other as well. Uh, interestingly enough, the 1304 seems to be handling the heat uh, better than the 1404. We're definitely seeing a lot less uh, thermal drop off, although it is kicking in um, at high loads. Uh, even for the uh, 1304, but for some reason the 1404 not quite handling it so well um, right around, uh, so this would be, you know, we're up at about 55, 56,000 RPM, and that's kicking in just about 30,000, so this is just slightly under 50% loading. But overall, the 1404 able to hold its own against other motors in its class, uh, delivering on the torque you expect from the slightly larger stator and still maintaining a reasonable efficiency uh, in most of the zones that we would uh, want it.